Welcome to our statistic training. This is a database that we are featuring with Digital Toolbox. I work at the New Haven Free Public Library. My name is Colleen. And we are graced here with a good team. We have Megan. How do you pronounce your last name? Guinan. Guinan. And she's going to take us through the database, how to use it, and all the amazing information you can find on it. So I'll give the floor to you. Hi everyone, my name is Megan. Uh, I work at Statista and we are an online platform. We simplify the research process. We research, analyze, and aggregate statistical data and reports. And Statista gives New Haven Public Library patrons access to market information across 170 industries and 160 countries. On our platform, we have more than 1 million uh, multidisciplinary statistics with 300 to 400 new statistics added daily. There you can access over 21,000 infographics, 80,000 topics pages, 160 country reports, uh, reports covering over 170 industries and growing. We also have citation tools available so you can take your findings and if you are doing this for a school project or possibly something that just really they want to have the source, we have different citation tools available as well as some global comparison tools that cover consumer markets, e-commerce markets, uh, what's going on in different countries and more. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, can you enable screen sharing for me? I was just going to say, do you have the ability? Okay, I do not. <laughs> I'm going to make you a co-host. Perfect. All right, you should be good. All right. All right, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go into a couple of different uh, tools in our overall database. The first tool I'm going to show are our industry reports. And our industry reports, they consolidate the most important info on industries in a very detailed report that shows the most important and insightful data about the status quo and trends of an industry. And this database will help you understand how to break into a particular market or understand how this particular industry has performed over time. Uh, our industry reports, they're characterized uh, categorized by the NAICS code. So if you do know the NAICS code, you can go ahead and search it. And they connect you to a macro level overview of a specific industry. So we consolidated the most important in, uh, info and I will show you what one of those reports look like. All right. Now I am at the Statista homepage and you can access this through your, uh, the digital toolbox. Uh, from the New Haven uh, Library. And what I always recommend when you start with Statista is to go into the search box and type in a keyword and filter your results from there. So I'm going to do apparel. And from there, I'm brought down to the, um, our search results and you can filter by statistics, uh, forecasts and surveys, infographics, topics. I'm going to go into industry and country reports because I want to show you our industry report. And I'm going to go into manufacturing, fashion and textiles in the US 2020. And this is where you can download your report. Here is what's available in this report. I'm going to download it. And I also want to mention while we're waiting for this to load, um, with your library card and access to the Statista platform, you have republication rights. So you can take this data that you find and use it however you need in your, uh, whether you're building your business plan, um, or putting together a presentation, you can take the information here and put it uh, right into whatever you need it for. So well, here's- say, I forgot to say how to get there. So um, the way you get to statistics through the library is you go to nhfpl.org and you go to our collections tab and then electronic resources. And it should be there alphabetically. It's under our business resources or you could see a link to it. 
um, and you should be able to log in with your library card. And if you're having trouble, you can library chat us on our website and we can get you in if, if they need other information. Awesome. Um, so here's a little bit of uh, what's in this report. It's a big report, so I'm not going to go through all of it and bore you guys. Um, but you can see that we have some key figures, uh, financial numbers, top companies, so those big, co uh, big box companies, employees and salary information, as well as uh, research. And we always, if you want to know where we got all this data from, if you scroll all the way down, we're very, uh, we, we say where it's been aggregated from, and then also um, if, if this is some of our internal studies, we'll tell you our methodology. So the first couple pages, uh, this, so we're talking about manufacturing, fashion, and textiles. We have some key figures. So how much is this industry worth? How many companies are there? How many people does this industry employ? average mean wage. And then we scroll down, we have a SWOT analysis. If anyone has taken an intro to business course or if they haven't, uh, but you should know that the, when you are entering a new industry, it's really important to take a look, a, a bird's eye view of what's going on in this industry. You need to identify your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. So we have this all put out for you. We have our industry definition as well as some related NAICS codes. Financial numbers, so total value of shipments, fabric mills, just some inside information of this particular industry. We cover 170, so if you don't see, it's not just apparel. Um, I'm going to go with an apparel theme today, but we have so much more than just apparel. All right, so the next slide I'm going to, the next tool I'm going to show you is the consumer market outlook. So our outlook reports, you can see that we have a couple of these. They present key performance indicators such as sales, revenue, and prices of the most important consumer markets worldwide. And the purpose of this tool is to help you understand how an industry is performing. And you can also do it at, at a specific country level or a region level or a global level. So let's go into an example together. So back to Statista. It's in our outlooks right over here. You can click onto the consumer market outlook. And we're going to go into the market directory. And here you can see all the different products that we cover. We're constantly adding onto um, our market directory. For example, if I scroll down, we have a segment for hand sanitizer. Six months ago, we did not have anything about hand sanitizer uh, market. And now we do because the people have wanted it. So if there's something you don't see now, um, it, chances are it will eventually it will come into um, it's come to the market directory soon. So I'm going to go into we're going to stick with apparel and I'm going to go into the women's t shirt market. So here you'll be able to see the forecasted revenue development of the women's apparel market in millions of dollars each year. Uh, I also should point out we have some quick highlights of what's going on a market definition, what's included in this report and what's not included. So we're talking about t-shirts and singlets. We're not talking about bathrobes or nightwear. You can also filter down by the location, by the region, subregion, and the country. We're going to see how the women's t-shirt market is doing in the United States. All of this information can be downloaded as a PDF or an Excel. And here we can see how the revenue, how much revenue is generated in this particular market each year and how, and we have those numbers projected out into 2025. We also have revenue growth. As you can see in 2020, there's a huge dip and that's because uh, we um, updated everything to reflect COVID and in COVID, for, because of COVID, not too many people were buying women's t-shirts. 
scrolling down, average revenue per capita, volume, so how many pieces are sold in this, uh, you know, how many women's t-shirts are sold each year and what we expect that to be out into 2025, average volume per capita. This is a really interesting tool. This is price per unit. So this can help you for your business plan. What is the average price of the product in this country? Uh, here, the average women's t-shirt is $7 and 50 cents. Um, you folks are in Connecticut. I'm, you know, we're in the tri-state area. We know that <laughs> maybe not in, in this area, it's uh, the average women's t-shirt is $7 and 50 cents, but this is including all of America. And we project that to be $8.14 out in 2025. So this can give you an idea what you should price your product and to keep that price in mind um, as years go by. And here is our global comparison tool. So you can see where the, you know, your particular country stands in the global scheme of things. So here are the, it always shows the top five countries. United States were number one, but if you also wanted to see what's going on in Brazil, you can hover over that country and see their annual revenue. I also wanna point out in these little segments that this can be exported as a high res image. So you can take this image, download it, uh, and stick it right into your report. And I mentioned citation tools before. So if this is for school or anything else that requires a works cited page, just pick the citation format, copy and paste. And scrolling down, we have these great key market indicators. So this, these key market indicators, they change depending on which market you're looking at, but it's other things to consider when you're entering a market. So we're talking about women's t-shirts, right? In the United States. So we have our population of the United States but also what's the female versus male population? Here's one, consumer spending. So what are Americans spending their money on? And we also put in tourism, because if you think about it, we're talking about t-shirts, t-shirts and tourism go hand in hand. Um, and all of these data points are available to be uh, exported as an Excel file. The next report that I'm going to show you is our digital market outlook. So this is the same look, feel, and functionality as our uh, consumer market outlook, um, but this one is going to talk about the digital services economy. So going back into our outlooks and our digital market outlook. And here you'll see we're covering topics under digital media, e-commerce, uh, fintech, e-services, like event tickets, uh, cinema tickets, smart homes, digital advertising. I'm gonna go in the e-commerce market and I'm going to click on apparel. And again, I'm brought to the apparel e-commerce market on a worldwide scale, but we just want the United States. I'm gonna click. All right. And again, some quick highlights, what's going on in the e-commerce apparel market, the market definition, what's covered in this report. So here it's a much more broad than the consumer market outlook. Um, this is men's and women's outerwear, children's clothing, four plus lingerie, stockings, bridal wear, working attire. We're not talking about shoes and shoes accessories. That's in a separate report, um, as well as hats, scarves, and gloves. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I'm sure you already went over this, but like if we're looking at this on this page, but we all of a sudden we don't want children's clothing in this report, do we go back and we search for specifically men's and women's outerwear? Do you think that's the easiest way to do that? So in the digital market outlook, it's just focus. It's just focused on apparel, but in the consumer market outlook, that's where oh. it's more segmented out. So you can filter by uh, you can children's find apparel. it two different places. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we also have a uh, report that you can download 
and take a look at as well that covers everything in the fashion e-commerce market. So here's the revenue and how it's growing over time. We can see that it's growing in, uh, for e-commerce sales are growing in 2020, probably because we're all sitting at home and uh, online shopping. Healthy. <laughs> exactly. Um, users, so who, how many people in the millions in the United States are online shopping and how much we expect that to grow? Average revenue per user. and the sales channels, so uh, online versus offline. Here are the top five online stores by net sales. I know that, um, you know, if you in particular are uh, opening up your own apparel e-commerce shop, um, here are, these are the big box stores that, you know, might not be your direct competitors, but it's good to have that information in mind. Here is our demographics. So if while you're putting together your marketing campaign and you want to know who I should be focusing, you know, I'm running this e-service, who should I be targeting when it comes to e-commerce and apparel? It's mostly 25 to 34 year olds. Um, these charts again are interactive. So you can even take these numbers out and back in. This uh, can also be exported as a high-res image or in an Excel form if you wanted that, and then those citation tools. We also have users by gender. So it looks like more females than males are online shopping for apparel. And then the users by income. Scrolling down, we'll see those global comparison tools again. So this is uh, the top five countries. So this time, China is number one by a long shot. Um, then it's the United States coming in number two. And then, you know, the, the next uh, three countries. But you can see right here that it's uh, the U.S. and China really dominate this particular industry. And then we have more of those key market indicators. So, you know, we're considering the population, what we're, uh, Americans are spending their money on, but also telecommunication. What is their access to smartphones and broadband subscriptions? Because if you want to shop online, you have to have access to either a smartphone or an internet connection. So that takes a, you know, that's, it should be considered as well. Um, all right, so the next outlook I want to show you. I have a question. How often is this updated? Is it like a monthly thing? That's a crazy amount of research. <laughs> yes, uh, Kalita, could you, you probably know that. Because I know it's updated quite frequently. Yeah, that's a lot so of manpower. <laughs> <laughs> the outlooks are, um, are updated, I believe, twice a year. Well, they get up, updated every time we upload a new um, uh, segment. Okay. Every time we, uh, we uh, upload a new segment, that gets updated as we get new information on it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it seems very current. That's very helpful. Yes, and we did do an overhaul when it came to uh, this earlier this summer. Um, we did an overhaul to take COVID into effect. Because um, okay. you can see how, you know, for... Uh, some of the consumer markets, they've taken a dip, and then some the e-commerce markets have uh, I know Kalita had, Kalita had pointed out toilet paper, which I thought was funny. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. that market, yeah. <laughs> For anyone um, who's uh, out there, we have everything you need to know about the toilet paper market if you are interested. When I tell <laughs> you we cover a lot of industries, we cover a lot of industries. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, the next outlook I'm going to show you is advertising and media outlook. This is hot off the press. This is something we just added. Um, so uh, keep stay tuned. There's going to be even more. Um, but this is a tool that was designed to help you understand the trends in the advertising market. So when you're making your strategic promotion plan, um, and especially when it comes to social media advertising, where do you want to place your ads? Um, how many people are you going to reach? So we'll go into, and this is over here, Advertising and Media Outlook. You'll see the, the little new tab. 
going into the market directory. So we have advertising, all the different ways that um, advertising is conducted, as well as media. We're going to go into social media advertising. And again, we want to have it on a US scale. All right. And here, again, some highlights what what's going on with ad spending on social media, a market definition. So we're talking about ad revenue generated by social networks or business networks, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, as well as ads in social networks, uh, like sponsored posts, um, as well as uh, ads within online games. That's that includes a lot more than Facebook, that would be like Instagram, all that kind of stuff, Pinterest, yep. like, oh, okay. Yep. Um, so what's in this report, so all ad spending generated by social networks and social posts, but um, we're talking, yeah, we're not talking about the um, online game ads uh, playable on social networks. So I'm thinking like ads in Farmville. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> throwback. Um, yeah. And then uh, revenue generated from membership uh, subscriptions or premium fees. So here is how ad spending has changed over the years. And we project that to go up a lot over the years out into 2024, spending development, you know, COVID impacted everything. Um, here's the split between uh, desktop and mobile. Um, so you can see a lot of revenue is generated through social media, the, adver the advertisements on mobile. In our outlooks, uh, you'll, every once in a while, you'll see an analyst opinion. So when, you know, you're looking at all this different data and you don't know what this all means, what, what kind of conclusion should I be drawing? Um, we have uh, the annual, the analyst opinions there um, to kind of bring you back down like, okay, this is what it means. They're written by um, our analysts are industry experts in, you know, the various industries. So this can really help you when you're trying to get a grasp of what does this all mean. Here's the reach by social network in, uh, in millions. Um, so if you want to start putting out advertising, um, you know, some ads and you want to know how many people you're going to reach. We have this all here and you can, again, take, maybe you don't want to advertise on Snapchat or Twitter. Um, I just want Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest. You can take those out, maybe even do the total and then export that. So it's kind of just like your, there we go, <laughs> Our, your custom image. And, and in the last, when we did our staff training, there was something about, um, you could get the names of the people that like compiled some of these reports. Is that true? That would be in our methodology. Um, right. I think yeah. we have it, um, advertising media out outlook. Our methodology, so this can be down, the, our methodology can be downloaded in right. um, the contact information should be at the end of the. Yeah, that's fascinating that you can yeah. actually reach out to the people that did this. That's great. Oh, yeah. Um, let me just go back to social media advertising really quickly. Scrolling down, um, average ad spending per social media user. So you can have an idea of, you know, to um, how much people, you know, the average price point uh, companies spend for one person. Global comparison tools, United States and China are clearly like neck and, or, yeah, no, we can say neck and neck with each other. They have the biggest market share when it comes to social media advertising. And again, the key market indicators, the population, their, what we're spending our money on, telecommunication, our access to it. But we also consider social media pen penetration, how many households are in the United States, all these different things can uh, company revenues for some uh, for these social media companies, just to have that um, in your back pocket. 
All right, and then the last outlook I'm going to show you today is our industry outlook. So this is another new hot off the press outlook that we have added. There's going to be more stuff that will be available, but this is uh, providing you with industry forecasts and market information based on data from national statistical offices. Mm -hmm. And this data covers agriculture, manufacturing, and service sectors. All right. And this one is the last industry outlook on the page. And I should, before I move on from all the outlooks, so we also have uh, the mobility market outlook, if you want to take a look, that has everything to do with um, uh, planes, trains, and automobiles, um, you know, ride sharing, all of those kinds of cool things. Country outlooks, that's really great to kind of get an idea of how a particular country is performing um, uh, from an economic standpoint or a human development standpoint. And then our technology market outlook that has just everything that's going with um, uh, software as a service, hardware, um, and other e-services. So in the industry outlook, this is still new. So we'll be uh, adding more as time goes on, but we cover agriculture, mining, lots of manufacturing, which I'll go into, uh, energy, water supply, real estate, information and communication, uh, support services, and some other um, industries. I'm going to go into manufacture of wearing apparel. So this is just the uh, manufacture of wearing apparel uh, in the United States. So we're talking about um, apparel industry, including all tailoring, so ready to wear or made to measure um, as well, all materials and all items of clothing. And we have all the NEEKS codes here. Um, and then what's included in this report. So pretty much everything except for repair. So anything upcycled or, um, you know, taking to the, um, to a seamstress to uh, repair. Um, so this is the revenue and how we expect it to grow or dip over the years. The total number of uh, apparel manufacturing enterprises. And again, those key market indicators. So this is just an overall idea. This is stuff that's been aggregated by, you know, that's all public information, but we wanted to give those visualizations for you. Yeah, people don't know where to find this information and it helps librarians because when you ask yeah. us a question, we have to find this everywhere. So this is why we love this. Yeah, and I just like the, the visualization, just like you, you see all the numbers, but what does it all mean? And you know, what does it actually look like when it's in a graph? So much more digestible, absolutely. Um, so the last thing I'm going to show you folks today is our business plan export. Business plan export. There's a lot of uh, stuff available at, on Statista, but I think this is something that can help you when you're putting together your business plan for the first time. Um, what the business plan export does, it provides you with structure and content for creating your business plan. And you can download the data you need when it comes to number crunching. So we're going to start our data export. And what you want to do first is you click into the market you want to enter. And then you pick the region. So we want to go into the United States. And now we're going to start our data export. So this comes in an Excel file. Okay. All right, so this is the cover page. This is where you um, want to put in your currency, so USD and then the year you want to start your business. So we'll say 2021. We have these little bubbles that pop up that um, can help you, that'll guide you through um, 
the business plan export. It's a little bit more, if you, it, it calls for a little bit more advanced Excel knowledge, um, but this can uh, be used in all different ways. Um, so here is the data tab. And this is where you'll find all the various data and key market indicators that are related to the market you're looking into. So here in apparel, we have everything segmented out. So baby clothes, blazers, uh, uh, dresses, furs, but we also have the female population um, factored by, and then we also have uh, the various ages. You can also like conglomerate and hide things that you're not paying attention to in Excel. That's like, if you don't know Excel, you can absolutely hide. You can use the hide function because this is a lot of information, but it's exactly. like amazing. <laughs> yeah. So you can even just write price. I just want to know about the different prices, um, the consumer spending. So that can also be factored in. So you can filter by the, pa the overall package, the indicator, um, so anything volume, you want to know how many pieces are sold. You can filter by the regions because we picked uh, the US. You can see the Americas as a whole. So North and South America, you can factor in just North America, just the United States, or if you wanted to do on a worldwide scale, you can do that as well. We have a great question. Does this open in Google Drive as well, or is it just Excel? So it's going to be a hop and a, a skip if you don't have Excel you can download it and then upload it to Google Drive and then this way it's saved there. But it, it, I've tried it myself just in case and it works just fine. So it just download That's it great. and upload yeah. it, yep. Um, and then we have these numbers from 2016 and some of it's projected. Sometimes we have stuff that is out to 2030. So that's like population. Um, but for the most part, everything goes out to 2025. So you have some data uh, some forecasted data for the next couple of years. The next part is uh, your the market modeling. So this is an interactive graph that allows you to look at the broader development of this annual data and you choose the various indicators that will be populated on the graph and you can use it in different ways. So I'm going to get rid of these little boxes <laughs> um, and I want my indicators to just show the female population. I want to talk about sports inspired apparel. So athleisure, which is becoming more popular. I want it for women volume. So I want to know how many sports inspired apparel um, pieces were sold over the years. And then I'm also going to put in lasers, women, volume. So how many pieces were sold? Don't need that. Want it for the United States only. And as you can see, as I'm changing things here, it's populating over here. Um, and I'm only talking about three data points in row 33, 34, and row 35. So 33, 34, 30, whoop, 35, get rid of that over here. And from, you can also scale it down a little bit. This is uh, in the billions to make it look a little bit more easy to digest. We're going to have it to the 10th. And here is that model. We can also change the style. So I like this style here. And then I just only wanted to have those three data points and I only want 2021 these other years. And then here I have an idea of my market. So as the female, this is the female population, as that in the United States, as it grows, but it's not jumping too much, I see that the sport, the athleisure, that sports inspired apparel is growing 
quite steadily. And then I see that the women's blazer market, the pieces being sold are dropping a, uh, a lot every year. We're can, exercising more and we're working from home more. <laughs> exactly. So that's, that's the proof in the putting. That's a, that, those are the, the numbers you can go and say, um, you know, this is why we're going to go towards a more casual look instead of the business look. Um, but you can make those, you can mo um, model that market and just show you like a visualization. This is what's going on. You can also do this by price. I have a, another example that we put together. And if you um, wanted to download this page, you just go to Excel and um, down. How would you do that? That yep. one graph you created. Um, oh, that would be the what I created. That's from the business plan export. And then it pulls everything that's the, this is the data. Everything on this tab pulls from the other from this so tab right you, here. If you wanted that screen, would you just take a screenshot? Or is there a way to easily download once you've narrowed everything down and created these graphs? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. You mean like if you want it this, if you want it this to create the graph, you so like put in a pitch deck or something like, if Oh you yeah, yeah, yeah. You can screenshot that. You can screenshot okay. this. Um, and I'll also show you um, another tab after, after this um, that, okay. that easily screenshot or easily just uh, put it wherever you need it. Um, here's another example. This is something that we filled in a while ago. This is the headphone market. So here they're factoring in headphone revenue, headphone price, headphone volume um, in Sweden, <laughs> um, how many customers. So all of those data points, they have this all factor here. Um, but I just wanted to show you an example of another way that somebody can do it. So you can talk about um, not just the volume, but you can also talk about the overall uh, revenue as well. The next tab is our profit and loss statement. So you would want to use this to estimate your company's revenue and expenditures. We included a lot of suggestions that you'll want to keep in mind as you put together your plan. Um, let me get rid of these little boxes. They're super helpful when you are putting this together for the first time. Um, and we have three different views. So this is the level three view. And this has all the categories. As we scroll down, we put in tons of suggestions. This can be deleted. You can copy and add more stuff in if you want. Um, but we're, we try to factor in everything. So advertising cost per click flyers, giveaways, technology licenses. So if you're in the apparel market, maybe, and you want to have a, a technology, uh, I used to use um, AS2000 to have uh, keep track of my inventory. Um, and that's a technology license. Um, employees, uh, recruiting, all of that information um, is, we put that in there for you. So this is the level three view. So everything's segmented out. If you wanted to just show the level two view, which is a condensed overview, if you needed to show um, somebody, you know, a report. And then we have the level one overview. And this just shows the summary. So maybe somebody at the top who doesn't care about all these other expenses, they wanna know the bottom line number, uh, you would be able to, to do that. Um, so this is where you put your own estimations of your specific product. Any green cell is where you input your numbers and the blue cells are the calculations based on the numbers that you put in. I'm going to show you, go back to here because this is all nicely filled out already. Um, don't want to bore you by putting in little tiny numbers. And this is when they're talking about headphones. Um, here's the, the two products that they are selling. So two different wireless headphones and the total cost of sales. So they factored that in, their monthly revenues, travel expenses. And this is great if you're entering a new market that you're not familiar with. This is fantastic, yeah. Exactly, um, and I'm sure there's other factors that you'll take from other databases or other information that you've gathered. So this is a great place like, to put all your findings into one sheet. Mm -hmm. 
And then when we go to the comparison tab, so everything's all filled out and everything that's pulled from the market and profit and loss statement is in these great summaries in the comparison tab. So this, the headphones in this case is all filled out quite nicely and they're able to make some statements of when they plan to become profitable. So this is uh, from, they started their business in 2019. And they said they knew that they would be profitable in 2020. Um, they also put plugged in some statements that say by entering with a high price, we plan to gain a, pre a premium image in the market and just some other things as well. So you can see the total sales revenue over the years, total cost of sales. So everything that was plugged in here was automatically calculated to the next couple of years. And then everything from that market tab um, that they have over here is summarized in a, a, a line graph here. So this is, they can make the statements, the general headphones market will be stagnating at inflation. The premium market will slightly increase uh, in this competitive environment. We can only gain shares with an aggressive price strategy. So they're, with this chart, this is where they're justifying why we're starting off with a, another reason to start off at this high price point. And this all changes depending on what you select and hide and enter. So yep. this will look different no matter what you do. Yep. And then like you mentioned before, you can screenshot this, stick it right into your presentation, um, do whatever you need. You could take the Statista logo and put your own logo. We just have our Statista logo just to show us. Um, but this is when you download it, it's uh, you have the republication rights. You can do whatever you need. This is just the-, the And it's free template. with your library card. So yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last thing I'm going to show you is um, a pitch deck template that we have available. So after, let me go back to the business plan export. So after you filled out your business plan export, you have everything you need to to enter this new market. Now it's time to pitch to investors. It could be, you know, an investment company. It could be your mom. It could be anybody, um, or it's a teacher for your project. Um, the, the pitch deck that we have is a great way to just have some content um, available for your, your pitch. We it's have- great to pitch for Christmas presents. Oh, you should make a whole thing for your parents to say this is profitable it'll be less money etc and this is why i should get this present <laughs> exactly um so we have there's tons of slides available you can take delete it however and include whatever you need but we have um these really great prompts so as you're putting things together um, and you want to have this presentation, we have prompts. What is this current presentation about? Um, why does this new product or service exist? What problem are you going to solve? Who has the problem? These are things that need to be addressed right away when you're pitching something. You've all seen Shark Tank, um, but this just kind of, you know, uh, helps you, put, uh, gives you a place to put all your thoughts. I will say I love Statista, like I'm a super fan, but this is my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's so helpful. Definitely. Um, so how, how are you going to get the share of the market? State your partners and what they provide. So lots of great prompts. And then we include some samples. Uh, I know some people rather see like a sample before they start filling it out. So we have a couple of examples, anything with that little red corner we put together. Um, we got lots of samples. Let me scroll down more. We also have this management tool set. This is another um, template that you can use. Uh, we have the Pestle analysis, SWOT analysis, Porter's five forces, and the Canvas model. I'm going to just show you the SWOT analysis because that is my favorite, and I think it's the something that's very common when you're in your intro to business courses. I think everybody has at one point in their lives put together a SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. So this is combining the internal and external views uh, to uh, leads to solutions. So this is where you identify your strengths. And we have the prompts again, like where is your, where is your company the benchmark? Why do customers prefer you instead of the competition? Your weaknesses, you want to 
put this out in the open already. Uh, opportunities and your threats. So everything and as you scroll down, you combine the two different, um, uh, we combine the, the two different, um, you know, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So uh, really easy to download and do with uh, and use it however you need, but just really great way for content and structure. Um, we will ask, can you show us where to get infographics? Because I think those are helpful to put in pitch decks as well. Definitely. So there are two different ways you can access infographics. We have our infographics tab right here. This is where you can access over 21,000 different uh, infographics. We add uh, four to six uh, infographics a day and they cover uh, different topics. So US election, uh, brands, uh, this is something in India, we have COVID, um, advertising, it, lots of different um, topics. And so this is done in more of a, um, like this is where you see it, the newest infographics coming in. And we have a little editorial blurb as well as some links to some related stories and content. And here you have, uh, this is pandemic is streaming another boost. So traditional TV versus video on demand. This chart can be downloaded or posted to uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. It also can be embedded. So if you have your own website, uh, you can embed that right in there. And then again, those citation tools. Um, and if you want to look for a specific info, infographic, we're gonna go back to the statistic page. So we're gonna say video streaming. And you can filter by infographics. And here are all the infographics that are available uh, or the infographics that are related to uh, streaming. So click into here. The infographics are great for content. If you have a social media site and maybe you see an infographic that is related to your your particular industry just post it share it it's a great way to if you don't have anything for that day we have something for you um or just some some prompts or to maybe uh relate your story to whatever it, the infographic is but this is just there's over 21,000 infographics and they're uh they cover a large uh, range of topics. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything that they'd like to see while we are still together? Four questions I just want to mention with the Excel. If you're a little overwhelmed and you don't have um, more than basic Excel skills and you want to kind of dig more deeper into it, or if you need basic Excel skills, um, we do offer Excel classes from time to time. You can find them on our calendar on our website or our Facebook event listings. So check those out if you want to get the most out of Statista and your reports.